Hi guys, it's Mrs. Welts here. I have a guest today on the channel, Mr. Hovland. Hey, how you doing? Um, he teaches art at Spalding Elementary School and he's gonna be talking about cubism uh, portraits and um, take it away, Mr. All Hovland. All right, well, Pablo Picasso and cubism is probably one of my favorite things to get into. So at the end of this lesson, we're gonna cover quite a few different ideas that cover cubism portrait ideas. One of the first things that we're gonna look at it's just that sometimes just using simple shapes is what's going to make this lesson very successful with cubism. Another thing that cubism artists like to do, they like to have multiple views in their artwork. They kind of like to have it look like it's front view, side view, maybe they like to put the back view in there somehow or another. So here's kind of just a simple little trick that you can do to kind of show like the side of the face, the front view of the face here, profile, front view. Another thing that cubism artists like to do is they like to kind of have a little bit of fun with everything and distort the features, maybe put an eyeball over here, put an eyeball sideways, maybe make the nose really long and elongated. Just have some fun with it. Sometimes, if you look at some cubism art, sometimes they don't even use curvy lines at all. They just like to use kind of angular lines. So if you want to kind of go that direction, just lots of straight, jagged kind of lines, you can go that direction as well. Now the background is kind of an issue with a lot of these pictures. So what they kind of come up with is this broken mirror effect. And if you think of like a glass, it's been broken. I'm just kind of adding all these just straight kind of angular lines just to kind of break up that background space. And I'll explain what we can do with that in a little bit here. And of course, cubism artists, they love working with colors and paint and all sorts of wild colors. So anywhere that you can incorporate pattern, design, something just to kind of give you more areas to have certain colors and stuff like that. And finally, this is not finished, but just to kind of give an example, wild color. Cubism artists, like I said, their artwork doesn't necessarily look realistic, so they have the freedom to have a lot of bit of fun with their colors. So just go crazy with your crayons and your markers. You use wild colors, okay? So let's get started. For this, we're going to need just some plain old paper. If you got a Sharpie or a pencil, anything that you can draw with. I like to draw Sharpies, but... You might want to use a pencil first here. So first thing we're going to do is just start with that simple shape. It could be an oval, it could be a jelly bean shape, just something really simple, okay? Next thing you want to do is kind of incorporate that, that multiple view thing here. So a little trick that I do is kind of do that profile, do kind of like the nose right there. And then you add some lips. If you think about the side view of your lips and then a chin. And if you make it out, See the side view of the face right there? And we can have this be like the front view over here, okay? Next thing again, incorporating those simple shapes and distorted features. So maybe you wanna put like an eyeball over here. Maybe just a simple circle for an eye. Maybe put some details in it. Don't go crazy with realism or anything. Just kinda of keep it real simple. Maybe you wanna put another eyeball over here. Maybe I wanna do like a side view of an eye. It's kinda of like the letter V with a C in there. And then maybe put some more details in there. Put some eyebrows, maybe I'll put like a rectangle shape for an eyebrow. Just another place to add more color. Maybe over here I want to kind of draw out the lips. Make some big lips right there. Okay. Ear. Your ear doesn't necessarily have to be where you need it. Maybe I want to put an ear way on top of the head here. These cubism artists, they like to have fun again, you know. Maybe I want to put another ear over here. I'm going to keep that angular line thing going in there. So I'll put like kind of an angular straight edge ear in there over there. Okay. Then we're gonna go on with adding maybe a neck. Give it some shoulders, but again, your shoulders don't have to match up. Maybe one shoulder's going way off over here, okay? Kind of think of those distorted features and stuff like that. Next thing we gotta do is fill up this big empty background area. So just kind of drawing that kind of broken mirror. And if you've ever seen a mirror or glass that breaks, it's just lots of straight lines that all kind of go like this in all sorts of directions. Don't go crazy with this. I've done this a few times where I get a little bit too much in there and it just kind of distracts from everything. So just kind of a few random lines, just kind of take those big empty spaces and kind of break them up a little bit there. And then, oh, I forgot to do some hair, but I can fix that very easily. I'm gonna do some kind of crazy hair like that. And when I color that in, that can all get filled back in there. Maybe I'll have some crazy hair going this way, mad scientist kind of looking guy here, like that. And then we need to get some patterns in there. So again, just find some spots. Like I said, I kind of made a mistake with my hair. I'm not gonna turn my mistake into a, a piece of art here. So maybe with all those lines in there, I'll put some pattern in there. 
See, I just made a mistake and turned it into something there. And put a few more lines in there just so it's kind of like a little bit more of a pattern there. And then, I don't know, maybe I'll do some circles here. Maybe down here just to kind of break up some empty space down there. Just kind of look for big empty areas. Those are where you want to kind of touch up with some patterns and just some areas to kind of put more colors and stuff like that. Maybe I'll do a checkerboard up here or something. All right, so there I got just a real basic cubism portrait drawn there. Now the fun part, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna do this with you guys, but if you guys wanna do this on your own, just get some crayons, get some markers, markers around here somewhere, colored pencils, if you got some watercolors at home, you can use pretty much anything, okay? Just kinda use whatever you got and have some fun with it, okay? Well, I hope you enjoyed this, and maybe later on we can show some more examples of some finished work. I got some, uh, some students' work that I could probably show later on in another episode or something like that, but just have some fun with this one, all right? Thanks for watching, guys. Uh, we'll be sure to post more videos later this week. We'll see ya. See ya.